Hi everyone, so today we are going to do the last challenge, reverse maker of Android application exploitation series of Islamabad. So these were the grand finals or finals. Um, after these we had no challenges and yeah, so let's get started. You might have seen 90 degree already. So um, this was actually pretty simple. This was, you know, the most hard challenge or, you know, the, the challenge with most points, right? And this and secure app. So this was 400 points, but uh, we weren't able to do it. Uh, this was pretty easy, you know, uh, because of tournament pressure and stuff, you sometimes cannot get things right. So, you know, I'm going to do it and you are going to notice that this was really easy. If you don't want to spo uh, spoil this for yourself, you can just download the APK from the description and do it yourself. So, I don't think the so. description is necessary. Application use uh, application uses library to handle the data of direct dealers. So, try to recover the data from library. So, I, I don't think so. there was any data like that, but, you know, just generic flags. So, as always, we are going to use JetX. Uh, to statically analyze the application and then we are going to actually move forward to dynamic analysis in this one as it is required so static analysis didn't help us much uh, for the second flag definitely but the first one we are going to um, do dynamically okay so uh, here we can see that um, a native method is being called or you know um, is being declared on the top right uh, it is actually being done from this native library and uh, that native library is uh, right here so you you might have seen a spoiler here already so we can see that in assets we have an ESO file which is um, which looks interesting but we are going to explore that later but now what uh, really concerns us is this lib native lib dot so and on uh, over here we can see that this method string from jni is being called and probably this method is going to you know return something so what we're going to do is first use JNI trace along with Jenny motion and Frida to see if we can, you know, get the flag. If not, we are going to move to RMS um, and that is easy to do. So I forgot to turn on the emulator before doing the challenge. Sorry about that. It's going to take, I think, almost like 10 to 20 seconds and then uh, it'll be deployed. Right. Um, there we go. And uh, and we can, until then we can do JNI trace. Uh, I think I have it installed right. So you pass the library name here, which is going to be lib native dash lib so. So, and then you're going to pass the package name or the application name, right? So that is this. Uh, before that, we are going to turn on Frida. So ADB shell, um, can it autocomplete? No, it can't. <laughs> okay, so Frida, there you go. So Frida is on now. And yeah, I'm going to run that as well. And there we go. Like we, <laughs> it actually, it actually just fetched the flag right away. I mean, it, it didn't even wait for anything. I'm not sure why. It, okay, so JNI trace by itself, I think runs the application, right? So you don't have to do anything. You know, it'll it'll invoke the application, load it, and you know. So the fl the the method was returning stuff, right? As we can see that the return type isn't void, so that means it was returning something. And what it was returning was this flag. And yeah, this was that simple and we weren't able to get it. Uh, I'm not sure why. So yeah, this is the first flag. I'm just going to get a file in here. And then we are going to move to the second one. So the second one is actually interesting. Um, we're going to see. Uh, first, I'm going to run JNX on the application to get the source, right? Because we have to access this .so file. This is not being called anywhere, right? So that me that makes it interesting. And I have also looked at this one. It doesn't contain anything about the second flag, right? So so probably this one contains, right? So um, it's going to the worst maker, resources, assets. And then I'm going to run Kidra. And then I'm going to import. Uh, I think it might have been, uh, it is already there, right? Avatar make. If you want, you can just you know drag the file from here to here, and it'll import that easy. And then we are going to double click it, analyze it again, and see um, see the interesting stuff in it, right? Okay. So it says it has not been analyzed. We are going to do that, right? So if we come down to functions, uh, it is going to take some time for them to be you know like beautified and stuff. Uh, or oh, okay, they have been loaded already because you know um, I loaded these before. So. I went through each one of these in sequence, right? Nothing here. You can see that there's the space 64 decode method. But again, um, this is not of that much use to us, right? This is pure C code, which is like difficult to interpret. Um, base 64 encode, again, you know, really difficult to read through, right? Um, understanding it. So, you know, I just went through each one of these down, 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 down. And frame dummy, 
And then when it came to print flag, I found something interesting here, right? So there's this base 64 encoded string, right? What if this is a flag? So, you know, we can try and open CyberChef here, or you can also, you know, decode this in your terminal. But um, yeah, I'm going to go with CyberChef because there's something else involved here as well. So when you base 64 decode that, you can see that the data is in binary format. It's not actual actual string, which we want it to be, right? So what do we do here? probably like other challenge 90 um i think it was 90 degree right yeah so it had xor in it right so uh basic point encoded and xor uh, first uh the flag was xor right and then it was basic for encoded so that is what we are going to do but where is the xor key right so in that arm binary and 90 degree challenge we had the xor key but in this case we don't have that um, if you take a look at here this is this method funk encrypt but it is taking something as uh, another parameter you can see that uh, it is passing our base 64 encoded string local 14 uh, 18 actually um, base 64 decode passing like three parameters to it and then it is calling this method local 1c so that means first it is decoding uh, it's passing the length of the base 64 string and then pointer uh, the location of that right and then it is passing this local 18 to this funk encrypt and then it has another parameter which is grow uh, if you double click that and you know just going to like do this and you can see that it has this value 842109 and from what we know from the 90 degree challenge or what we know in general so you know XOR keys are five or six in length or whatever uh, you can keep it to be um, and yeah probably that is XOR key so we are going to do that in here XOR this pass the key but we see we don't get anything because the type here is hex we need to make this UDF8 or Latin and when you do that you get the second flag yep it was that easy uh, you can see the parts here being highlighted off the string equals doesn't get it because it's not padded whatever So yeah, that was it. Uh, we weren't able to do it But it was like really simple and if you're if you have already done it props to you. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and Yeah, this is the last video of the series probably um, I'll continue with network maybe um, Maybe right so yeah, thank you for watching. See you